Hey, it's Tim here. Connecting to data is one of the most basic things in Tableau. And in this video, I've taken a snippet out of my Tableau desktop crash course to essentially give everyone a great starting point for understanding how Tableau connects to pretty much any data source. We cover CSVs, Excel files, and we even look at a database, as well as describing some of the other sort of file types that you can connect to. So uh, as ever, let's get stuck in. So here, this time I'm on my Mac, just for everyone's benefit, I'm on my Mac and um, everything looks exactly the same. Maybe sort of Mac specific things are on this particular page. And you can see that I have this connection pane on the left hand side, okay? And this connection pane is pretty important because depending on what you're trying to connect to, you need to go to the right section to select that file. For argument's sake, let's say that I wanna connect to a CSV file, like a text file with some information in it. I can go ahead here and select text. And what it will do is it'll open up my uh, you know, connection window a file window, sorry. And you'll see here that at the bottom, it's looking for these types of files. So if you're not sure what type of file Tableau is expecting to find when you select an option, you can just go down here to the bottom. And on Windows, it's pretty much the same, but it just looks like a Windows interface. It will tell you what files it's looking for. And that's why these are all grayed out because none of these files match the criteria of this list. And that's essentially what you need to sort of look out for. Now, how do you know the file extensions for these things? Well, it's just a little bit of experience. Like Excel is .xlsx or .xls or whatever. Whatever Excel has been over the years, that's what it's going to be. That's a very well-known uh, file format. Text files on the hand-to-hand -hand are a little, bit, a little bit broader. You can have .txt, .csv, .tab, .tsv. .tsv is tab-separated values. .csv is comma-separated values. Um, and it goes on and on, okay? The JSON files, now this is a web optimized format. So you can see here, it's only looking for one specific file. I'm looking right here. If you're wondering where I'm looking, I'm just looking uh, here where it says a JSON file. Um, that's one specific format. That's uh, known as JavaScript object notation. I think that's what, no, JavaScript. Yeah, it is JavaScript object notation. And um, what that means is essentially it's data stored in a specific way, typically from web-based systems. So if you go and export something from an internet-based system, and you just ask for the raw data, typically it will give it to you in JSON. So you can connect directly to that as well. If I hit cancel, you can connect to PDFs. Now this is a bit hit and miss, the PDF scraping, you know, it's got a capability built into Tableau that uses um, a scraper that goes and looks into the PDF and tries to find the data across multiple pages. Um, but it can be hit and miss, it's not always reliable. So try it, if your PDF has data, you think Tableau can grab it, try it first. You might save yourself a ton of time copying and pasting, but if it doesn't work, then yeah, you might have to resort to something a little bit more advanced or simpler, just copy and paste yourself. Spatial files are uh, quite an interesting addition to Tableau. They've been in Tableau forever. I don't know why I say addition, but um, they can be connected in sort of a couple of ways. Now, spatial files uh, are typically this whole range of uh, files. I won't go through each and every one of them explaining them. The ones you're typically going to see used commonly with Tableau are these Esri shape files, .shp, GeoJSON files, which can come from web applications like Google Maps and so on and so forth. And then you've got um, KML files and um, a couple of other files that sometimes come out of uh, similar systems. So KML, KMZ, and um, you might have this MIF and .tab as well. Those are very specific. And then zip files typically also contains uh, spatial data within them as a package, and that's why it comes as a zip file. So Tableau is able to sort of work with all of that. And that's why here you can actually see that it's highlighting the files it can see. So all this time I've been going through the files, it's not been capable of connecting to them. Here you can see that it's happy to connect to these two files. So let's go ahead and find some data to connect to. Let's go ahead and uh, to do this, I'm just gonna go to a website and try and find some data. I wanted to give you sort of an honest experience of connecting to data that you just found on some sort of website. So I'll go to Kaggle. Kaggle's really, really good. Um, it's gone to a data set that I used a long time ago. So let's go back and let's go to the data sets tab and uh, we'll try and see if we can filter this. And you can filter by specific file types. Let's just select the CSV and hit apply. And you get sort of a list of different files. And uh, I'll connect to this top 100 Spotify songs. This looks pretty good. Um, and you can get a little preview of the data. So let's go ahead and download this. Uh, it, looks, it looks pretty small, but let's go ahead and download it anyway. Oh, I need to register. All right, let's go ahead and sign in with Google. And once we've done that, uh, I should be able to download this. Let's go ahead and do that. 
And yeah, I'll save it to my desktop just to keep things nice and easy. Once it's on my desktop, I'll uh, show it in the Finder and I will uh, unzip it. Okay, so now that it's been unzipped, let, where, where is it? Where is it gone? Uh, let's see, where is my... Where has it put the file? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, well, though. It's not, it's not, it doesn't seem to be showing up. Let's click out and click back in. Right, let's try this. Let's just, I'm pretty sure it's on my desktop, so let's just go try and find it. It's a CSV file, so if I select text file and I go to my desktop, uh, you can see here, there it is, a list of most streamed songs on Spotify.csv. And if I just click out of it, you can see all these other files don't match that criteria. That file does. I select open and you go into what I call the connection interface. Now, let me just give you a quick overview of this interface. The connection interface is broken into what I call three sections. You've got the preview section on the bottom. The reason I start with the preview is because people always want to see something familiar first. So this is where to go to see your data that you've just connected to. You get a, a list of this, uh, the field names on the left-hand side of that preview pane, so you can see what that is as well. And then on the top, you have what is called, I'm going to call it the data modeling window. This, oh, Siri didn't like that. So let me take my watch off so it doesn't try and interfere with the live stream. Um, this is called the data modeling window. And in this window, you can essentially uh, build data models and work with your data. I'm trying so hard not to get into really advanced topics. So bear with me, but I'll explain what a data model is very, very briefly in a second. You don't need to worry about it. And on the left, you have what is essentially a list of your connections and the resources that you can bring into your connection and use. Okay. So what is the workflow for connecting to data? Well, as soon as you connect to data, the first thing you should look for is what is the connection called? This is essentially going to match the name of your file. And if you want to, you can change this. Uh, the easiest way to change this is just to double click here at the top and you can uh, change the name. I'll call this Spotify, uh, Spotify, hit enter, and you'll see that that changes, but it's not going to change the actual name of the file that I'm connecting to. Yeah. So the name of the connection is changed up here, but it's not going to change the name of the file that I'm actually connecting to. That is always going to be the name of the file. And once I've connected to the file, just below it, I'll highlight this in red, you have essentially the different things that can be in that file. So when we connect to an Excel file soon, you'll see that this is slightly different. But here, I've just got this one file here that you can see, list of most um, uh, listened to songs on Spotify, which is essentially the file, the CSV file. And then on the bottom, I'll highlight this in uh, green, you have essentially a couple of new features. So you have the union, which allows you to bring data together. We won't cover that today. That is, again, it's not really an advanced topic, but it's just not sort of pertinent in this particular uh, sort of crash course. Um, and then the new table extension, which really is advanced. Don't, don't, need to, don't need to worry about that at all. But very briefly, this allows you to use um, analytical applications to bring in data from other systems like Python and R to bring data alongside your normal data. Okay, so that's the left-hand side of the connection window. Now, when you've done that, let me go ahead and remove this. When you've connected to your window, you see when Tableau automatically does something for you when you connect the first time, it goes ahead and brings something into this space for you. And as soon as you drop it down, you get the preview we saw before. So in essence, when you connect to something for the first time, it's already done for you. And so you're probably thinking, well, what do I need to do? Well, it's already been done for you. It's right here. But if you don't see that, or if you want to bring in a second item, what you need to do is just go ahead, grab the file and bring it in and drop it in. And now you get a preview. The other thing is you might want to see your data in a sort of more spacious window. And if I hover over the file, you can see there's a little tiny box that appears just here where I'm highlighting. It's disappeared because I'm not hovering over it. But now if I hover over it, you can see it's right there, this little tiny uh, table icon. And when you hover over it for long enough, it says view data, you can open it up and go ahead and view the data. So if I just go ahead and drag this out, oh, it's not letting me drag it out. There you go. Uh, let me drag it down. No, nope, it's not going to let me drag it down. It's going to let me drag it out. That's absolutely fine. I won't complain. And it shows me the data. So essentially, you've got one, two, three, four, five columns. Okay. Now that I'm here, it's important to notice a couple of things that Tableau has done. Firstly, it's gone ahead and looked at our data and understood that each column represents different types of data. So types of data just mean numbers, text, 
values, and you can see that it's calling this one ABC, this one ABC, and this one ABC. Essentially, it thinks that these three columns contain text, okay? Now, we can see that this column here contains dates, so we're going to need to correct that. We'll come back to that in a second. The other thing, though, is that it, this column here called rank, it's seeing contains numbers, and you can see it's got a little hashtag for numerical values. And the same again for streams in billions. So although this number says 2059, I'm not sure if this 2059, I don't know if this is 2 billion and 59, or if this is 2059 billion. I hate this kind of stuff. I think this is 2 billion streams. We can go on Spotify and have a look, but I'll just assume this is 2 point something billion streams, okay? So all of that information is called metadata. Metadata is essentially information about data. It's essentially the core information that tells you what is in your data, and you can then use that metadata to make sure things behave the way they should. For example, numbers should be treated with numerical values. Text should be treated with text behavior, text values in essence, okay? So how do we change these? Well, if I close this preview window, you'll see that just over here on the bottom, let me just bring this pane to the left. I have the same preview that I've just seen, but it only shows me the few uh, hundred, hundred rows. I know that because it says 100 rows right here. So if I set that to 1,000 and hit enter, it will show me 1,000 rows. Um, it's still showing me 100 rows. I don't know why. <laughs> it might be a bug on my Mac version, but it should show you whatever number of rows you type into that space. Now, when I go to this column here at the top, you can see that I can actually click on these as well. So let me go to the date column here, release date. And I'm just gonna tell Tableau, look, can you change this to another data type? And when I click on that, I get all the data types that are available. So I get number, whole numbers, date time, date, string, spatial, Boolean. These are types of data. And if you're not sure what these are, go ahead and just Google them. They're pretty straightforward. Literally, once you know them, you know them, you don't need to learn them again. But they're pretty straightforward. In this particular case, I know that this column that I can just see right here, when it says 29th of November, that should be just a date. There's no time, there's no like uh, 29th of November at midday, it's just a date. So if I go ahead and click date, Tableau does something very smart. It goes and processes all that text and tries to make sense of the date. And because Tableau is good, it's actually gotten very good at that, that I'm confident that it's got it right. So you see here, it says 29th of November, 2019. I'm in the UK, so this is the correct way of doing dates. <laughs> don't, don't, don't come at me if this looks completely wrong to you. This is the correct way of doing dates as far as I'm concerned. Um, and so uh, now it's changed that to dates. You can see that we have a calendar item right there ready to go. And uh, this has been understood and everything's going to work nicely. So we can go ahead and start using this in our visualization. Now, if I wanted to bring another data set in, I could. But again, this is a crash course. We're just going to work with single data sources for now. Um, I've done many videos and other people have done many videos about how to bring two data sources together. When you're doing that, you're typically doing something called a union or a join. Uh, and if you're working with Tableau, there's also this new concept called a data model. I've also done a video on that. So go and research that. But for now, assume we're connecting to one data source. We've got one connection. Everything is set up nicely. Now we're ready to visualize our data. What we can do is we can just go down here and Tableau's kind of telling you this the whole time. Go to this step to go to the worksheet and start visualizing something, okay? So when I go ahead and click on the space where it says sheet one, we're into the building window. We can actually start building a data visualization, okay? And now I'll go through this in a second, but I wanna show you a couple of other ways of connecting to data as well. So that's pretty much the flow for connecting to data. Now, let's say you want to go back to the data connection window. You maybe realize that something is wrong and you need to change the file. Well, you can do that at any point. Just because you've started building the visualization doesn't mean you can't change what you've already connected to. So to do that, you just want to go back to this data source tab here. So if I go ahead and select that, it takes us back and we're pretty much golden. We can just start uh, changing everything again. We can rename it, work with it, but everything's going to work as you'd expect. Uh, it's going to be pretty straightforward. So that's essentially the first example of connecting to a file. We connect to a text file, we're ready to work with it, we're ready to visualize it. We can kind of put a, put, put a nib on that, bow it off and say, we know how to connect to text files, okay? The next file I want to show you is an Excel file. And Excel files are the most common files you connect to in Tableau. I hate to say it, 
people should be using databases, but Excel is just so common. So this is what you're going to have to connect to. So how do we connect to that? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that, having connected to one connection already. You see, if I go back here and I start trying to add a connection here, Tableau is going to get confused because it might think that we want to bring the data together. We want to kind of put these two files together. I don't want that at all. I want a separate file in my workbook to work on a separate visualization completely. So how do I do that? Well, if I go back to sheet one, let's say I've built a visualization, you can see that here at the top, I have a plus icon next to a cylinder. Now, a cylinder is typically the icon they use for databases pretty much everywhere. If I go ahead and click on that, you'll see that I get the same window that we got when we were connecting to data at the start. So that connection window, it also lives here. Essentially, you should be really familiar with it. And this time I'm going to choose the Microsoft Excel file. Okay. When we choose that, I want to go over to my documents folder and I want to make you aware of a folder that Tableau installs on your machine in pretty much every case, unless you work in an enterprise organization where they've decided to take that file away from you. <laughs> and it's called my Tableau repository, this folder right here. Now this repository file comes with every installation of Tableau. And if you double click it, you'll see that it actually has a few things. It has some sample workbooks has logs. If you ever have an issue with Tableau, this is where it will drop them. It has data sources that you might have saved and it has a bunch of other things. Okay. One of the things I like about this is in that folder, you should have a another folder with the version of Tableau you have installed. Now I only have 22.4 on this particular setup. So I'll go ahead and double click that. And then I'll go ahead into that file and I'll look at the English version of the data sources that I have. And you should also find in your version of this folder, in your documents folder, this file here called eusuperstore.xls. Now, this is a great file because it allows me to show you something. And I know for a fact that you should also have this file. If you don't have this file, I'll put a link to this file in the document so you can find it. The thing to note, though, is that depending on your version of Tableau, these files are different. So if we start visualizing something and you see a slightly different number, don't worry, we've all got the same data source. It's just that they change them from version to version. They maybe tweak a number here, tweak a number there. Sometimes the totals don't quite add up, but generally speaking, all the sort of columns are the same. So just follow along with columns. And as long as it looks the same, you're in, you're in good company. And we've got two versions of the file. We've got a European version and American version. Because most of the YouTube audience is American, I'll go ahead with an American audience. Um, the second biggest country on my YouTube channel is India. There is no Indian version of this. Maybe we should make one as a nice little side project. Let's make an Indian Superstore version with Indian locations that are more specific to the Indian market. Maybe we should do that. Uh, let's go ahead and select the sample file, select open. And when we do that, Tableau thinks about it and it takes us back to the connection window. So you're probably thinking, well, hell, hold on. Last time we had the CSV file, where has that gone? Well, it's not disappeared. What it's done is it's created a new connection. And the new connection allows you to basically switch between this connection and the previous one we made with the CSV file. And if you just go to this top little drop down, you can see that the one we renamed, if I just go here, you can see the one we renamed previously called Spotify is right there. And if we click on it, we go back to it. And if we click on this cylinder again and go to the new one we've just connected to, which is an Excel file, we go back to that. So you can switch between all these different connections just right here. Okay. Now, if I go back to the Excel file, you'll see that it says right here that it's an Excel file. Let me change to my red annotator. I prefer that one. Now, we've selected this Excel file, and in the Excel file, it has three tabs. If you're familiar with Excel, we have tabs across the bottom. You have uh, well, you just have tabs, it depends on what they are, but each of them could contain information. And so what Tableau is telling me is that, look, this file contains three pieces of information, it has an orders table, a people's table, and a returns table. And if I'm not sure what they look like, I can, of course, remember, I can go ahead and preview them just by clicking on those, and I can see, ah, oh, this data actually contains information about orders made at my Pacific store. Let's go ahead to the people table, connect to that, also good, uh, returns, connect to that. Also good. So this is just allows us to look at the data sources and understand what's going on. Okay. Now you'll notice that as I connected to each of those, these icons changed. I don't know if anyone noticed, if you don't believe me, rewind and look at the icons again. These icons have changed and they've gone to a green uh, square with a little sort of tag. And the tag 
lets you know that this data is actually coming from a named range inside of that Excel file. If you're not familiar with name ranges, I've done a whole video on this, so go ahead and look at the video where I talk about name ranges and Tableau. I talk about this in a lot of depth, but the key thing here is that when you're working in Excel, in fact, let me just go to Excel and I'll show you. If I go to Excel here, I have it open. If I say uh, make a table, uh, let's make a, oh, my cursor's not working, there we go. Let's make a table of uh, uh, fruits. Um, I've got my annotator on as well. So let's go ahead and say apple and pear. Okay, and I could say this costs uh, 10 pounds, very expensive apple, and this costs five pounds, okay? Now, that's a piece of information, that's data. Now, if I highlight these, okay, and create what's called a named range, if I just go to the data tab just up here, and I can never remember how to do this. Where is the named range options? Da, 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 uh, the, the actual easier way to do this is just to go to the home and uh, format it as a table, which is, where is the format as a table options? My God, I'm really bad here. Well, I found the name range options instead. I, I can't get this dark mode version of Excel. Um, it's just clearly throwing me off. So <laughs> if I select the table, select the find name, you can see that it tells me the name range here. It's just pointing to that sort of square. If I select OK, that becomes a named range. And that is essentially what we have. You can see here the named range is called Apple. And it starts with this row, and that is essentially going to be visible in Tableau as Apple when I connect to this Excel file and start working with it. So that's what a named range is. And uh, people use them in organizations all the time to sort of section out data where you have multiple things on an Excel page. That's essentially how to connect to each and every one of those individual tables. And if it doesn't exist, you can go ahead and connect one, and it allows you to pick out data from a page full of information. Okay. But for now, uh, what I really want to look at is uh, orders. So if I just scroll up, you can see that we have the orders uh, view over here. What actually happened with this is the icons didn't change. I scrolled down, that's what must have happened. This, this interface is, <laughs> what is happening with Tableau interfaces recently, honestly? So this never used to scroll down. This just used to move down to make space for it, but it's deciding to, to scroll. So it didn't change icons. Anyway, here's the orders table. To bring it in, we just drag it in, like I said, showed you before, and we get the same preview as we've had before. Our data is here, it's pretty good. We can customize any of these as well. We can do anything we need to do, and it's pretty much good. Now, the final thing I'll show you is that there are some data prep capabilities in this window. If I go to this little drop down, you can see that I have the ability to split and do custom splits, essentially break out the data and in some cases, even pivot the data if I need to do that. So in this case, if I just select split, Tableau looks at that column of information and it automatically splits it out into three columns. You can see here at the very end, it's added them in. And a little clue to let you know that those have been created here is that if you look here at the very, very top, just in this section, you'll see that these have a blue marker and these don't have a marker. The blue refers to this blue over here. So when you're connecting to multiple things, they might have different colors and those colors will show up on the columns to let you know which table they've come from. That's basically it. Okay, so that's why you don't get a blue icon here at the top because these have been created inside of Tableau rather than just in general. So now that we've done that, we're pretty much good to go. We can go ahead to sheet one as Tableau hints us to. So I'm just going down here, selecting sheet one. And we're back here, ready to build some data, ready to work with our visualization, and we're pretty much good to go. Uh, if I look here on the top left, I now have two data sources, Spotify and Superstore, and that's pretty much everything you need to know about that, okay? The very last thing I'll show you how to connect to is a database. So you've connected to a flat file, you've connected to Excel. The last thing I'll show you is a database. Databases are pretty common at work, so it would be a pretty bad tutorial to, to show you, not show you that. So let's go ahead and connect to a database that I have access to. Now to do this, I need to be super careful that I don't share my credentials on the screen. So let me, just give me one second, um, that I just don't give you all my information to my database and I make sure that I have it in another window and I can type it in uh, uh, appropriately as and when I need to. So let me just, where where is this? Um, where have I put this data? Honestly, I should be more organized. Here we go. So I think, I think we're okay. 
one thing I'm slightly concerned about is that I might have security settings on my database that stop me connecting because I'm not where I'm supposed to be. <laughs> Long story short, for security reasons, um, sometimes it's good to tell your database not to let you connect from certain locations because those aren't locations you're supposed to be connecting to the data. So for this, what I'm going to do, I'm going to move this. Can I move this window to another window? Yes. I'm not going to show you this until I've filled it in because I don't want you guys getting all my database details. So let me fill it in off screen. Apologies, this is probably the worst, this is the worst uh, live streaming uh, thing to do, but you can't dynamically um, fade out stuff. I trust you guys won't be stealing my email and everything, but I need to just be able to uh, log into this database and do that. So all I've done is I've typed in the credentials. Now, I've actually done a video on how to connect to Snowflake, so you can go watch that video where I have blurred everything out. But as soon as I connect to a database, you'll see I get a different kind of window. It's not like what we've seen before. Um, for Snowflake specifically, I get what's called a warehouse. And each database has its own sort of setup. So you might get different things in. You might have like a warehouse, but the warehouse means something else. You might have a data lake. You might have all of these terms. You might have schema as well as an option that turns up in here. Depending on the database, they're all slightly different. This follows the terminology of that database. So I'll go and select my warehouse. In Snowflake, warehouse just means how much computing power you want to use. So I have one called Compute. This is my own database. I use this to run this YouTube channel and everything that goes on with uh, my channel. And then I've got a demo database, a Tableau demo database with demo Tableau data. So if I go ahead and select the, that, that works. Then I can go ahead and select the schema. This is the public schema. And in the public schema, you can see that I have three pieces of information. I have my employees table, my invoices table, and my orders table. This is all dummy data, so there's nothing sensitive here. My orders table, I can preview it just like I showed you before, and it looks exactly the same. So these options are just slightly different because I'm connecting to a different type of data source. But if I go ahead and close this, you'll see I also get an option to do custom SQL. Now, if you're the kind of person who just knows how to write their SQL to connect to a data source, you can actually go ahead and just bring that in and paste your SQL in here, and Tableau will go and run that query to return the data that comes back and use that in here. The advantage is you could do a lot of data preparation in this window, but a note about custom SQL, it can sometimes slow Tableau down, especially if you're using a live connection. So just you know, use it with caution. And the other nice thing is with custom SQL, you can insert a parameter that's controlled by the user that actually runs in this window. So if you've got a live connection, you want to give the user the ability to choose some sort of variable from the database. So your database is just not chucking everything out the user. You can actually use a parameter in this window to do that. That's just worth noting. But nonetheless, same as always, drag my orders table in. It looks exactly the same as we've been using before. Uh, table there. Preview at the bottom, ready to go, go to sheet one, exactly as you'd expect, connected, okay? So we've got three connections. We've got our Snowflake connection, we've got our Excel connection, and we've got our CSV connection. All three of them are up here at the top. Now, you're probably wondering, well, great, let's start visualizing our data. Let's start working with this um, information. Well, the tricky thing is actually we're not done. And let me just sort of take a break to sort of check what I've covered here. So the connection interface is done. Let's strike that out. Finding data to use. Oh, I didn't really cover that, so I'll come back to that. Connecting to data, I kind of feel like I'm doing that now, so I'll cross it out ahead of time. And yeah, the next thing we're going to come to is the Tableau extract. So you see, <clears throat> the, the, the easiest way to explain this without going into too much detail is that Tableau extracts are an optimized format of data. Right now, Everything we're connected to is connecting live. The way I know that is that each of these cylinders are just cylinders. So these are all live connections. What does that mean? That means every time I do something in Tableau, Tableau is actually going to that file and querying the information. Every time I do something with this particular connection, it's going to Snowflake, querying the data, and coming back. Now, that's fine, but if you're trying to build a dashboard at work, that's actually not fine because what happens if the database goes down whilst you're building something? What happens if um, you just want to build something quickly and you don't want to worry about the latency and the networking issues in your organization? You just need to get on with work. And so Tableau has another way of capturing this, which is essentially by taking a snapshot of the data. What it does is it goes off to the data source, it takes a snapshot, but it remembers where it got the data from. 
And when it takes that snapshot, it means that it saves it into a more optimized format that allows you to do a little bit more with it. And it also works considerably faster. It's also a lot smaller. So a good example, if I took like, a, let's say a 200 megabyte CSV file, like a text file, Tableau would compress that down to about 10 megabytes, much, much more portable, much faster. It's gonna be much faster than opening a text file and looking through it and querying it for information. And the added benefit is that extracts also allow you to do certain things that you can't do with just normal connections. Um, again, it's a little bit beyond the, the nature of this crash course, but you can do a little bit more with it. So how do you take an extract? Well, there's a couple of ways. Um, if I go back to any one of these, uh, in this case, let's go back to my Excel file. I can right click on it and I can select edit data source. When I do that, it takes me back to this window. And I wanted to show you another way of coming back here just so that you know that you can do that. Okay, now up here on the top right, you can see there's an option that says extract. I completely missed this before because I wanted to wait until I was here to kind of talk a bit about this. And you can see the default option is live. But what I'm saying is you should be using an extract, okay? And so let's have a look and see what happens when you switch over to the right-hand side. You see, when you go to the right-hand side, it says extract will include all data. It's not created the extract yet. It's just telling you that this is going to include all data if you were to take one. But here's the advantage. You can change what data comes in. You can change what data comes into your snapshot just by selecting edit and Tableau gives you this window that allows you to choose what data you'd like to bring in. Don't worry too much about the stuff here at the top. All you're paying attention to is the filters pane here in the bottom. Okay. When you select add, it shows you all the columns in your database. So let's say I only want to bring in cells from a specific subcategory. I could go ahead and select OK, choose that subcategory, select OK, and now I've limited my data to just the art data for my extract. I've not deleted it from the database, I've not deleted it from the file, I've just brought in a tiny sample of that data because maybe this is all I'm analyzing. If I select OK, that's all fine. And now when I go back to my visualization to start using it, Tableau actually asks you, hey, where would you like to save this extract? And this is kind of confusing because you're probably thinking, whoa, 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 I thought you were going to save it in the workbook uh, in this particular file and you're not going to take a copy of my data. But in actual fact, Tableau does need to write the file somewhere. It likes to kind of write the file. So I always say to people, look, save it to your desktop because we're going to delete this later. I'll show you why. Save it to your desktop. And when it's done, you know you have an extract. When you go to the top left-hand side here, and it has two cylinders with an arrow going from the first one to the second one. Essentially, it's telling you that it's taken an extract and now it's using that extract, okay? And so if I go and ask Tableau, hey, what subcategories do I have in my data? I'll just go ahead and drag subcategory onto text. You'll see the only data I have in that file is art. But if I wanna connect back to the live data, let's say the database is back up and everything is great, I can go back in, right click, untick the use extract option and all the data comes back, okay? So just by switching that on and off, I can switch between whether I'm using my snapshot or whether I'm not using my snapshot, okay? Now, the other reason people use this particular extract feature is because they're only interested in a small part of the organization. And uh, other people use it to optimize the way they build their workbooks. They wanna make it go faster, they wanna make it easier. And so again, that's a really great way of doing that, okay? So that is an extract in a nutshell. There are definitely more I could talk about with extracts. There's definitely more you can learn. Go ahead and Google the topic, look on YouTube. I've done videos, other people have done great videos on this. Um, go ahead and check them out. In the recorded version, I'll maybe put up some links to some resources that I think are fantastic that I've not made, other people have made, that I think you should check out, okay? Great stuff. So we've created an extract. We could do the same with this first one as well. And this is another way of creating an extract. You can just right click the file here, select extract, and you get the same window. This time here, rather than in the connection window, you could add a filter. In this case, I won't. I'll go down to the bottom right, select extract. It will ask me where I want to save it again. I hit my desktop, save. And you'll see that this extract has a different time zone to the underlying data. Essentially, Tableau is looking at the metadata to understand, hey, what's going on here? I'm fine with this. I know this is fine. I'll select and show again. Click OK. And again, we have an extract right there. So pretty easy, pretty simple. Now, at this point, this is when I start to save the work. Okay, I don't want to go through all this effort making connections and then forget to save it. 
So if I click on Tableau and I go to File at the very top, I can go ahead and Save As. Now, if I click Save, it will just go ahead and open this window. And it will want to save it in my Tableau repository. I don't want it in my Tableau repository. I want it on my desktop. So let's go ahead and select my desktop. And you'll see it gives it a name called book1.twb. I'll call it Livestream. Okay, giving it the file Livestream. Now, this file extension is super important. So many people make this mistake, so pay attention, okay? A TWB file is just known as a Tableau workbook. At the bottom, there's another type called a packaged workbook, okay? And the packaged workbook not only contains your data visualization, but it also contains your extracts and any data sources, as well as assets like icons and images. Those all get packaged into a TWBX file. And so most people, I think, generally want to save everything in one file. They don't want to save it in lots of different places, then have to go back and find it and relink it, especially if we're about to delete the extract from our desktop. We just want to go back here and save everything in one file. So if I go ahead and select that, we're going to save it as a TWBX file, hit save. It will go ahead, save it. I know that's saved because here at the top, oh, just the annotators kind of gone in the way. <laughs> here at the top, you can see it's called live stream. And now that's saved, okay? And so what that allows me to do, if I find my um, uh, uh, little icon, is I can go ahead and I can now safely delete these two because they are actually now in my workbook. They've been saved as a package workbook. If they weren't saved, it would just save a TWB. And the next time I try and go and do something, it would still be connecting to the local files. And it would basically have a panic attack because it's saying, hey, I had extract, they were on the desktop, where have they gone? And so to fix that, the only way you can kind of get those back is to go back, connect to the original data source and regenerate the extract. Essentially, this option here, there's a couple of options sometimes here you can use to regenerate the extract, refresh, re-update. Tableau will kind of give you a hint as to what it needs to do, uh, but that's where you find these sections. You can m mess around with these uh, options, you know, figure out what they do, Google them, whatever, but we won't cover that in much detail. Go check out the videos on extracts that have been done by the community, okay? And now, even though I've got my extract in my workbook, I can do, go ahead, right click, untick use extract, and it brings everything back in, because what it now does is it goes to find the extract, realizes it's not there, then goes to the main file and brings all the data in. If I go ahead and extract the data, this time removing my filter for subcategory and bringing everything in, Select extract, we take the extract. You're probably wondering, why am I repeating extracts? It's because people don't get it. <laughs> so just want to make absolutely crystal clear that you understand what extracts are, okay? The very final thing, you can see a tick mark on the data source that I'm currently using, okay? If I go to another data source, you'll see that I don't get that tick mark because I haven't brought anything in and everything goes orange. If you're into that zone, you're, you're skipping way ahead. Just go back to the data source you were using select that, clear the sheet, just removing everything, or if I go back one step, there's a back button right here. If I go back one step, you can just go ahead here and select clear the sheet. That will clear everything. And now when I switch to another data source, that blue tick isn't there and nothing's changing orange, okay? You just wanna make sure you don't get confused. This is exactly what happens to people and they get so confused and they realize they're creating blends and joins, or oh, it gets crazy. So. Make sure you're working on the data source you're supposed to be working on by just making sure you clear the sheet or you create a new sheet if you need to, okay? So that is an extract. I've covered extracts in pretty, pretty good depth.